Got this. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, guys, to the high school E League. I am your uh, sorry, play by play, Tico, or Benjamin Tico Lee, and I'm joined by my color caster, Jackson Pro Williams. And guys, it is a pleasure to be back here once again for High School E League. I believe, was it week 10 now, or is it week 9? <laughs> 9. Uh, so, pretty much uh, today, it's a competition between Glen Glenunga International High School and Nazareth Catholic College. And um, before we get into it all, I'd just like to do a big shout out to all the people that have made this possible. And it is week eight, actually. Um, so oh. for the people who have made, Oops. so for the people who have made this all possible, um, from the teachers to the schools to um, a high school e league themselves for organizing this, uh, it's, they've been done an absolutely fantastic job of being able to get everyone on board, getting everyone to be online at the same time. So massive shout out to them. Um, and yeah, it's 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 gonna be an absolute pleasure to watch round eight today. Should be an amazing game. Now we haven't seen Glenunga pay. Uh, Glen <laughs> we have not seen Glenunga International High School play, play so before. far. <laughs> We've seen Nazareth College, Nazareth Catholic College play before, and we know what they're capable of. Now it's just, it's just a point where we have to say, step back and say, Nazareth, we know what they're capable of. Glenunga have to bring their A game to play against Nazareth because we know how well they played. We know how they can play together. It's just, I'm just interested to see how they're going to play against each other. Yep. And of course, guys, just a note, this is uh, last game for st the, the stage, the last week for the stage matches. Um, as of next week, we are going to be into the playoffs. So this is going to be absolutely fantastic. It's going to be absolutely crazy and uh shout out to fbi man uh who's saying hi mom so uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi mom from fbi man yep he yep, loves so, his mother <laughs> yep all right he is on the side of glenunga i'm sure his mother knows that but you know because she put him in that school right and uh yeah pretty much so um and i'd also like to have a good quote from um greek tyler one's cat three per four four in her three per four i Hitch to fur fur, quits. Siri, cat <laughs> went on keyboard. No, <laughs> this cat is learning to type as oh, we I speak. I love this cat. We need to we need to find the name of it. Anyway, what's the name of the cat? Uh, we'll find out. But speaking of playoffs exiting the the stages, we do, we are going to see the Victorian finals being played alive. Yes, so it's going to be played live at the Margaret Court Arena on Sunday, September the second. So. Guys, if you are anywhere near Melbourne, anywhere near Margaret Court uh, Arena on September the second, it'll be so good to it'll be so good to see you guys just supporting your favorite team. It's going to be played between. Uh, nope, that's not being told. Never mind. We don't know. <laughs> I was like. I was like, it's going to be played between... Oh, wait. We haven't even gotten to that stage yeah, we haven't, yet. Yeah, huh. But yeah, it's going to be in Victoria. Victorian high school teams battle it out at the Margaret Court Arena on Sunday, September the 2nd, before the OPL, so the Oceanic Pro League Grand Final, in the Rod Laver Arena. So it's not going to be in the Rod Laver Arena. That's just irrelevant. It's in the Margaret Court Arena. Of course. And then it's, it does appear that um, we, are, we do have the name of the cat, by the way. Mr. Whiskers? No, no, that was someone else. Volley, Volley Bear. Bear. Volley Bear. No, wait, no. Hold it's it's. It, 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 give me a sec. So it is. It, it, okay, so pretty much, uh, um, I do believe that Nazareth College has Nazareth, Nazareth Christian College has lost some bands. Um, that's disfortunate. <laughs> I feel like there's a joke <laughs> about that, which I'm missing, but uh, please use proper English. Um, um, so it does look like they are, they only lose one ban, but looks like, so they are just going to ban the Akali, who is not allowed to be played anyway, because it's two weeks. Um, it's basically have to wait for the next patch before you can actually play a champion that was released on this patch. Yeah, so we talked about it last week. Akali won't be allowed to, is not allowed to be played for the next two weeks after release. And since this is Akali's, Second week out, she is not able to be well. Her rework 
she's not going to be able to be played, unfortunately. So that Nazareth are going to ban the Akali because they've already lost one ban. So, you know, mm. no one's speaking Akali. Yeah, pretty much. So we are just giving them confirmation now. So, um, key things to note in the changes this patch. Uh, how is Quinn feeling right now? Because I you do know that Quinn was an amazing lane bully. Was actually picked up in pro play by Cloud9 at one point and actually led to a couple wins in pro play. Wait, so you said Quinn, right? Quinn. Uh huh. And so I'm asking, what's happened with Quinn? Amazing things. Oh, it's, like, it's after the nerfs. Is Quinn like feeling weaker or stronger or? All right, so. It's it's more of a balancing thing that's happened to Quinn. So she used to be able to snowball so well into the late game, and then she, well, not snowball, because, I mean, she's an early game champion. She used to bully so well, but now I, am, I can feel it when I play her. She, she has a bit more of a later mid-game impact than she did before. Her late game has lost a tiny bit, but her mid-late, her mid her early game has lost a tiny bit. Her mid late game has picked up a little bit. Well, how's it picked up a little bit if it was just a nerf to the armor? Or was it because the crit items were changed that she's um, got a bit better mid to late? That too. Yes. So, I mean, I went a 25 and 4 game against a Cho'Gath. I love that was a couple days ago. That was a lot of fun. For those of you who don't know, <clears throat> I play quite a bit of Cho'Gath and I want to see this game. Because I feel like I should be disappointed in my fellow Cho'Gath player. I think I can save it. Replay. You can go into, log into my account and save it. And watch it. But, you know. We're going to head right into the game. Glenunga International High School versus Nazareth Catholic College. We have Glenunga on the blue side and Nazareth on the red side. Yep. So, as a, for Nazareth Christian College, they are going to ban the, uh, the Akali for us. As a basic they lost their ban. And, um... It, this is one thing I've noticed a lot late recently. I've seen a lot of Evelyn bands. It's, it's, I'm not sure. It's like Evelyn's not really in the meta at the moment. So this seems like a very peculiar kind of ban. Well, I mean, she does not, oh, she, okay. She's not impactful unless she snowballs. And I just feel Glenunga really don't want to deal with some snowbally champions, which includes Evelyn, which includes Elise. And of course, with the Elise and Evelyn out of there, we do see the Janna, so we do see a massive disengage and uh, utility threat from the side of um, uh, Glenunga being taken away. So whether Lucy down in the bot lane is a Janna main or whatnot, it's, it's either way, it's off the table. And that's also a late game scaling support off the table as well. Yeah, definitely is. And they have also taken a couple more. One top laner, Darius, taken away as well as the Zaya been taken away from the side of Nazareth. Yep, so it's very interesting that you see the Darius get taken away and then the Shen first pick from the side of Glenunga. So Shen, for those who don't know, in the top lane, gets a hard counter at all points of the game by Darius, and you just can't match him. You just, you can't match him in the 1v1, you can't match him in lane, you can't. The only way you beat him is with your ultimate and potentially saving allies. Um, so it's, it's very interesting to see that first pick as soon as you see the Darius ban. Um, considering they didn't ban the Darius themselves. Well, it was really smart, and now we see a Graves, I assume, would be in the jungle, as well as a Rakan in support. Even though Zaya has been taken away, a Rakan is still getting picked. Mm. And Rakan is just a really strong playmaker. Oh, but never mind. Talking about playmakers! Oh, oh Alistair! Or Alistar, however you want to pronounce it. The big cow. Is it- well, how would you pronounce that? Was it Alistar or Alistair? I pronounce Alistar. I got Alistair. That's this is awkward. I don't I don't know. It's do we have a we do I don't, okay we don't have a Hold backup on. caster. Okay. Wait, yeah. wait, we can we can Google <laughs> we can uh, Google translate and make it talk to us. Okay, sweet. Um so we do see the Ezreal pick up and also the Jinx pick up. So immediately we're seeing two completely different playstyles. We see the Jinx with the utility support. Um Jinx is a hyper carry. You need to get her to that lake. You need to get her to like and there's all the storm razor the runins the um probably the rapid fire and also the uh infinity edge so that's like three to four items at the very least before jinx properly comes online whereas ezreal ezreal's decent in poking <clears throat> and then gets scales into that mid game the cannon good top decent mid um what's how does it pronounce alistair Hold boom on. We, we can play we can play it alistair alistair 
Yeah, but that's Google Translate, so. Alistair. Alistair. Okay, guys, and we do have <laughs> And we have the Volleyball Ban as oh, well! No! That is so unfortunate. It's a GG rip for the side of Greek Tyler 1. Unfortunately, I mean, he wasn't going to pick Volleyball any- Oh, would he? He wasn't going to pick Volleyball anyway. Oh, uh, indeed. But still, it's one of those things where it's more of a sending a message, you know? And we do have the Oren Ban as well. So Oren, really safe top laner, great scaling, amazing engage, and a lot of people have been building the Ludens Echo. Now, the reason why that is such a problem is because you have the Jinx. Her orders do so much for those team fights already. But you have a Luden's Echo on the um on the Orn who used the ulti at the start of the fight. Jinx just opens up and gets those bolts, uh, enhancing her auto attacks, and then she just shreds. Ooh, this is gonna be interesting though. We're seeing a fizz. Not necessarily going to be I mean he does have smite, but he's probably gonna swap it with Graves. It's going to be a fin into what looks like... Oh, okay, he he trolled. It was a Yasuo, but now it's a Rakan with a Lee Sin Hover. This so, should be interesting. So it does look like it's going to be the Shen top, the cannon mid, um, Rakan support, and then looks like Lucy's going to uh, last pick the jungler. So it's it's going to be interesting to see. Like it, we're probably looking for a diver of sorts. Yeah, so it's Greek Tyler 1 who's going to be in the jungle. We do have Lucy up in the top lane. Vermilion in support. Zero AD carry and FBI man in the mid lane. I'm not going to repeat that because that was too much. But we do have an Alawi top lane against this Shen. Okay, so Alawi top lane is actually quite interesting. But you do need to get that early lead. Alawi does amazing with that lead. And it gets to a point where your jungle comes up to gank. She will 2v1 with ease. It's like fighting a Darius in the top lane. Um, but... It's a little bit less more wild than the Darius. Like you need to stay in the fight with Alawi, but you do have the ultimate for more immediate impact in those fights. With Darius, you can run away, so you have more kiting capabilities. So it's very it's very interesting pick there. I, I'm not sure how the Alawi into Shen matchup goes. I personally haven't played it, but you can only imagine that it won't be too good because the Shen does have quite a bit of mobility with the Taunt, and Shen uh, Shen. If he does, uh, if he does get, get the test of spirit, or if he does get the um, what is it, the test of spirit, hooked onto him when you when you pull that ghost out. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> then Shen is um able to go in there, uh, block any autos that can help proc the um tentacles, and just be able to uh, oh, just absolutely destroy the Alawi. And when you attack the Alawi, when she has that a ghost of yours, the ghost is actually decreased in the length of time that it's out. Yeah, and so we do have a lot of global pressure coming out from the center of Glenung side of Glenunga, sorry, Tongue Twister. Three teleports compared to the one teleport on Nazareth on Fizz. Yes. Jungle, not jungle, mid. What is with my brain today? I'm not sure, but one of the key things with Cannon is it Cannon relies on getting those flanks in the um in the team uh, in those team fights. So Cannon roaming is actually quite decent. He has movement speed. He's got quite a bit of lockdown capability in an AOE. So Cannon's actually a decent a decent pick here, especially against the Fizz, who is a melee matchup. So Cannon can help bully the Fizz out and just um it's. Because Kennen always buys the uh, Zonyas, that is a hard counter to any kind of Fizz engage in lane. So if you go stopwatch in lane post 10 minutes, you pretty much just won't die to the um, Fizz ult combo. But it's all about making sure you don't give the Fizz that lead early, and then you just bully the Fizz out, and then the Kennen can just get those runs effectively. Um, in the bot lane, as you're Rakan, you've got a lot of playmaking potential. But this Alistair, Alistair is a menace for champions like Rakan. You go in, you get knocked up, you can get hit back. You have so much lockdown with Alistair. So that is quite the threat for the Rakan. <clears throat> but Rakan and Ezreal are both so slippery. So I don't think it's that much of a problem for them. No, they do have quite a bit of dashes. They do have, yeah, as you said, they're very slippery. They can even heal up with the Rakan Q. They can... I wouldn't say they'd be able to sustain a bit better than an Alistar because his passive is just annoying to deal with in lane. But it's still quite a bit to deal with. The healing that comes out from Rakan and the Ezreal, their slipperiness, this bot lane is going to be hell for Alistar. He might be able to disengage, but that's not what he's built for, isn't it? Pretty much. He's, um, he's built to be playmaker. He's built to do what the team wants. And a lot of the time, there's a lockdown on the enemy. 
Um, and with a Jinx who will want to go ham and get the peel, uh, Alistair is going to be an absolute menace when these team fights come around. Yeah. Um, if we look at this top, if we look at this jungle matchup though, which we have actually talked about, Grace into Uder. Uder has been out of the meta for a while, but we all know how fast he is. But you got to think that Graves would have quite a bit of peel. So I do believe that even if the Udir does use his amazing jungle clear, the Graves has just as good jungle clear, has healthy jungle clear, and a lot of kiting potential. So the Udir has to get onto Graves and then stay on the Graves. And then Graves just has to make sure he doesn't screw up and he has to try and just kite like crazy. So it's, it's going to be an interesting thing, but I do believe that the... Uh, Considering the, I, I do believe the edge is on the side of um our boys on Glenunga due to the Rakan and uh and Kennen, just the sheer amount of uh, AOE CC and gauge that they have, uh as well as keeping them alive with the Shen Ultimate. I do believe that is favored towards them. Yeah, it'd be a massive combo if they're going to be able to pull it off. But we're going to head into the loading screen now. I want to focus more on the side of Nazareth though. They have quite a bit of AD on their side with the Lowy, with the Jinx, with the Graves. I will be expecting this fist to pop off. He's going to be their carry instead of Jinx. That's in the mid game, and Graves has actually gone to press the attack. Um, in the mid game, the Graves is going to be the primary carry with the Alawi. But the later the game goes, the Graves is going to like have his Black Cleaver. He's going to have his Sterax. Probably. Oh no, he can't build his Sterax. He's not melee. No. Uh, <laughs> he's going to build his uh, GA. He's going to become a bit tankier, and then Alistair and Alawi, with being these massive tanky front lines, are going to allow for this Jinx just to let loose. But they don't have a lot of engage for Peel. So Jinx seems like a very off kind of pick for this team comp, to be honest. It seems like a very diving kind of team comp. And then you have a Jinx who basically need to keep him safe against a Rakan, Kennen, and even a Shen, an Udyr, who just want to dive that back line. Yeah, basic Beast Boy, he's going to be depending a lot on the rest of his team so that he can stay in this game. Because playing an ADC in this current meta, even though the items have been buffed, it is still hell. Because we have a lot of divers, there's a lot of damage coming out from other champions that just obliterate AD carries. Hmm. But speaking of um, AD carries and the item changes, so basically when you go Storm Razor, your crit item and your IE, that's almost a thousand gold cheaper build path than it used to be. So this allows you to get your um, your third item, your second item, your first item power spikes just that much faster, and allows you to stay relevant more so you don't fall behind in gold. However, against the Ezreal with the Kleptomancy, Ezreal's going to keep on pushing for those leads. Oh, oh we unfortunately, are yeah, we do have a spectator uh, problem. Um, so I'm not sure what the goal is that we will uh, hear from Yuna. Um, our broadcaster. So, but anyway, so it's hopefully we are going to be able to get back into the game. But until then, we are looking at a different kind of team comps in regards to like how they're going to go in the bot lane after the first back. The Ezra Wakan is going to win that matchup. Um, there's they've got they'll have the sustain in lane. They'll have the uh, they'll have the extra poke. They'll have the tier. They'll have the sheen. So a lot of damage that's going to be coming out of the Ezreal. Um Whereas the Jinx doesn't really come online. Until maybe he gets his uh, Storm Razor. Yeah, no, Jinx doesn't come online until Storm Razor. Until she gets her first item, she, even then she's do she doesn't come online. You need a Storm Razor, Runan's Hurricane, and then an Infinity Edge. I remember when the days you used to go Infinity Edge first. Ha, <laughs> not anymore. It's it's gone. It's it's changed quite a bit. Storm Razor has become meta. We it's been a huge change. Storm Razor that first. Auto crit is huge. It's just... I don't know how to say it. It's just when we saw that item first come out into, into this game, it was, wow, that's going to be broken. It's not been broken, but it has been a game changer. And so we're just going to try and sort out how we're going to fix this, get back into spectating. Yep, so we are currently waiting on a... Um... Uh, so pretty much what has happened is, as of the new patch, there's been a client spectator bug in regards to when you're loading and trying to download the game, and it'll randomly just, it'll, it'll, 
it'll be a, a corrupted file or something like that, and it'll just kick you from the lobby. So we were practically loaded in the like, oh, no, nope, no, nope, you know what, you're not. So we have to wait on a solution. And uh, this is, we're just, we honestly, we're just waiting a solution so we can uh, get on board with this. Yeah, so we're going to be back in a couple seconds just trying to figure this one out. Yep. Welcome back, guys. <laughs> we are currently loading into the game. Oh, shit. Yeah, we have to op.gg this one, unfortunately. So we're going to spectate Greek Tyler 1 as we try and attempt to sort this one out. It's a long and hard process. op.gg is uh, so annoying when you're trying to spectate. Because, yeah. Anyway. So we're just going to try and load back into this one. See how the game goes. We're going to be joining, unfortunately, halfway through. So, we, if we even get into it. So we're, we're just going to wait a few seconds and see how this goes. Yep. So we are currently waiting on it to load in. Um, it does appear that... This part is... I'm going to retry it. Yeah, so... Sorry about this, guys. This is very unfortunate. But... Unfortunately, Riot or Rito, you really need to really just fix the spectators because us casters are going to be out of a job if you keep doing this. Please. <laughs> but... 
Yeah, we're still trying to get into the spectating, but unfortunately, we are not going to be able to get into it yet. Just a bit of error. Yeah, unfortunately, is not going to be working right now. You should be able to be, you should be able to see the game paused. But yeah, so unfortunately, this we are having the issue of um, it's not, it's going to command prompt and it's not going any further. Um, so guys, we do apologize. We are st just trying to fix a technical issue. Um, we will be back shortly. Hey guys, so unfortunately, there's been a uh, an issue regarding the um, regarding this game. So unfortunately, we are not able to spectate due to a bug with the clients in regards to spectator downloads. Uh, so unfortunately, we are going to just announce the results afterwards. We it is very unfortunate, but we we just are unable to spectate it. Yeah, you guys will be able to see the game on your screen right now, but unfortunately we won't have any casters and make it very interesting. You'll see the results, you'll be able to see the game, just you won't be hearing our beautiful voices. We'll be back after the game ends to announce who has won it, even though you've already seen it already. And just have fun, enjoy the stream.
Hey guys, um, since both our other casters couldn't be able to um, join this game, we will be um, casting. My name is Yuna and this is Yatos. Hello guys, apologies about the technical issues that we've uh, had previously, but we are back into it. We are resuming the game as we're seeing the second Cloud Dragon of the game going down. Yep, so, you know, as we did miss quite a lot of the game, we did lose about um, 20 minutes, 12 minutes of the game. Um, what do you think is going on right now, and you know, who do you think is taking the lead? Well, it definitely looks like the side of NCC. Unfortunately, I don't have the team names in front of me, which is a little. It should be here. So give me two seconds. Apologies. Where are the team names? It looks like the team with the Jinx, with Basic Beast Boys Jinx being five and zero, is a. Uh, a little bit powerful because Jinx is insane when it comes to scaling. So it looks like Nazareth Catholic College is in the at least at the very mid right now seems to be in the lead. Yep. So I do think so. Exactly the same. Jinx being so fed at bot lane, 20 CS um, above the Ezreal. They are they do have a 3,000 gold lead in throughout the whole game. They are on a one to five um, kill Ray and you know. Blue side seems to be getting pushed in the top side and the bot side, keeping their both mid towers up. Um, what do you think they could do to actually bring this game back? Because they do have a bit of a, um, you know, they are in a losing position. But, you know, what could the specific, you know, game potentials or macros they could use to actually win this game? Well, if you look on the side of the red team, which appears to be uh, Glidoway International College, and we'll come back to it in a little second, as it looks like there's a bit of a fight coming in. They're trying to fight for the blue buff, and despite being ahead, they are forced out of there with FBI picking up the blue buff. But stuff like this, they need to use a numbers advantage and simply overrun the side of uh, Nazareth, because like, you can be ahead by a couple thousand gold, Jinx, as an AD carry, as a hyper carry, needs protection. If you jump on a Jinx, she becomes redundant. And there's no one on that team so on that team that has crowd control outside of the Alistair who can protect basic Beast Boy. So I think if you manage to jump on top of the Jinx and destroy her, you they, the the uh, apologies the blue side of uh, in, uh, Glenness International High School should have more than enough damage to roll the rest of that team fight. So just outnumber them and then win from that. We all know that, you know, Graves' jungle is also a pretty, you know, he's sort of a carry jungler as well. But seeing how he's actually losing against the Udi in terms of CS farm, what do you think about that? It's in a way to be expected. Udi is a really, <laughs> it's an annoying jungler. If you've ever gone up against an Udi, you've played against him, and you just like, he always seems to out farm you. He always seems to be in the right position and he always is able to split push like an absolute monster. And it looks like Rick Tyler is actually going for the uh, the AD, you know, split push style build. I believe the phrase is opening the gates. So it's a little worrying because if he's able to get on top of the Jinx, Jinx is dead without the Alistair to babysit her. So the fact that the Udia is ahead of the Graves by only 500 gold, but it's still a decent amount. The fact that he's that far ahead of the Graves though is a little bit of an issue because Graves as a carry jungler really wants to be ahead as hardwired. Oh, they really want to try and force this, but an easy flat out. Some of the waters just not connect. How are they able to get a torn? Oh my god, Rakan gets Axe in the back on the slice and Melchim is tearing them apart! They are absolutely done already! It looks like they're gonna have to recover the fight. The Fizz doing what he can. Jinx long since dead, unable to use any of his summoners, FBI man. It's zero beating up against Lazarus, who is he able to get a turn? It does not look like it as he was outnumbered, outgunned, and that is an unfair fight coming in. But that was the opening they need. They had the numbers advantage, and basic Beast Boy on this 5 and 0 Jinx at the time, he has flash, he has heal, nothing got used. So, why, what, how do you think this all happened? Was it the placement issue between the teams, or was it just the team comp in general? It was an overcommitment. We saw the Chum of the Waters, and Chum of the Waters did not connect, and that is one of your initiations out of the side of the Catholic College. Once that failed, Hardwired, who had used his cooldowns previously, had nothing. Maiko had nothing. There was no CC. So that means FBI men got a beautiful slicing maelstrom, got access to the back line. Tyler and Zero, no one was able to lock them down. And so without crowd control to protect the Jinx, without crowd control to have proper fight lines, yeah, Nazareth just got straight up slaughtered. So 
They just have to have proper fight lines, or they're not going to stand a chance against you know, the likes of the Cannon and the likes of the, uh, the Ezreal. If you can see the Grave is getting easily poked out by the Ezreal and, you know, also the Cannon. Very quite easily. He's actually really squishy right now. Also, what, looking at the Rakan, you're playing Rakan, you, you can win lane, but if you keep everything even, he will definitely outshine you mid-game. Watching, um, yeah. you know, with his grand entrance and his ult ultimate, like, you know, just getting into a fight is quite easy. And also with their cannons, um, he's engaged. Both of them work very well together, which is quite a good duo, actually. So even if the Ezreal is completely, you know, it's easy, if he's useless, falls off mid-game, you've got the two ultimate combos that you need in this game. Exactly, and it feels more like counter-engage than actual engage because we saw in that last fight. If you look on the side of the international high school, outside of the outside of the Rakan, you don't really have a fantastic you know five v five team fight engage. FBI man doesn't want to go head first into the fight as a cannon. He wants to get the flank. He wants to be the follow up. And Greg Tyler again, he's playing moody. He doesn't want to be the first man in because he's so easily kited as we've just seen here. And he can just shred. He's got no resistances. He's got a little bit of health, but that's all he's got going for him. So. It feels a bit of an issue. Nazareth wants to force the fight with the Fizz and the the Alistair, but if they fail the engagement, they have to back up because if they don't again, well, we saw what happened last time they engaged about proper crowd control and fight lines, and history will repeat itself, and that's not a history that Nazareth really wants to run into. Indeed, it is. So. What what should Alistair do this time? Should he should he be waiting for the Rakan to actually engage? Or should he be trying to engage on a hyper carry on their team to actually secure a kill? The issue is that there's no who do you target here as the Alistair? You, your primary targets are FBI man and oh actually we'll have to look at him a little bit as Fizz is a little bit caught out of position. I don't know what he's doing back here, but he is gonna die for it because he is not getting his way out of there, but the rest of the team looks like they want to try and get it. The Taunt does not connect, but Jinx is untouched. The chat is oh my god, Rakan is on the back line, trying to buy as much time as possible, but unfortunately it's not in there. Now Jinx is excited. Jinx is going to be trying to take out FBI man, so he can make a death rocket. One more hit will do it. That is Jinx. That is one down. Lucy is taken out as well by the Tentacle, and Beast Boy is running a rampage through the rest of this fight. And I mean, we're talking about improper fight lines and damage. They were just so spread up. Rakan dived in. No support. No one came to help, and... And then the rest of the team, they didn't kill the Alawi, and well, unfortunately, we saw how that fight went. So like we said before, Jinx is the hype carry of this team. She's pretty much the sole champion in this game that, you know, has all the kills, pretty much. And like we said before, she does have quite the damage. And if you keep her alive, she will do a whole stack of damage to the enemy team, and that's what her actual team did. Rakan actually went, tried for... Uh, went for the back line, but you know, did he get any kind of support from that or any kind of you know engage from that? No, he didn't. Which is why Jinx actually she actually did quite a lot of damage to that fight. How much do you think she would have done? Um, quite a bit. Now Jinx in that fight wasn't the best. Jinx was unable to get the reset that she really wanted at the start of the fight, and actually only picked up two assists. I believe an assist and a kill in that fight, so it wasn't ideal. But it was a pretty good, it, it was a partly really good job by Nazareth Catholic College, because if you saw when Vermillion on the Rakan went in, the Alawi used her used her ultimate there, she, you know, the Leap of Faith, to simply stole out the rest of the fight. Um, Gwen couldn't follow up with the engage because they'd have to run through the Alawi, which you just straight up can't do. So Rakan was left in his own, Jinx was able to survive the fight, and then when you know, when the Rakan died, which meant the rest of Nazareth could follow and join the rest of the fight, they could they hadn't killed Nico. He was still alive in the front line. So they simply couldn't follow it up. And at that point with man down, Jinx had it set, you know, Jinx got the assist reset, so she was able to get excited. And then well, the rest of the fight is, as we know, history. So it's just one of those it's really iffy of whoever starts the fight has to pick off the correct target, or they're going to lose the preceding fight. So these fights seem to be going back and forth between, you know, who initiates the fight, who engages and who counter engages and who picks who. In terms of just general team composition, um, what do you really think about, you know, if this was a full pro team battle, who would actually win this game? It comes up to ha who chooses the fight and how the fight is chosen. For example, 
if Nazareth Catholic College here is able to have proper fight lines with the Jinx in the back line, with the Graves a little bit in front, Miko on the front line along with Hardwired, they want to have that four standing on the front, and then we have Lazarus indeed flanking with the Fizz. He gets the Chum of the Waters onto a priority target, such as Greek, FBI, or Zero. He deletes them, and then the battle lines of the other team are disrupted. They have a Fizz in the back line, they have an Alistair and an Alawi forcing the fight on their own front line, and then you have Jinx and Graves free hitting from the back. That's their ideal scenario. On the other side of Glen, they want to be the ones, ironically, with the flank. They want Shen on the front line, um, with Spirit's Refuge should be more than enough to buy the time he needs and to get a two, two man taunt. They want Zero behind the Shen, throwing out free damage, and then they want FBI, FBI and or Greek on the flank. If you get Udir on top of the Jinx, Jinx is dead. She does not have a summoner, she's not going to survive. Same thing with FBI. If FBI can catch Nazareth clumped up, which they should be, they should have a four man that's relatively clumped up together. If he can get a slicing maelstrom onto them and then have follow up from Zero, follow up from Vermillion, and follow up from Greek, Nazareth should die. So it's very much who's in the correct battle lines, who gets the who gets the correct flank, and who is the one pulling the trigger. So it's like I said, I don't think team comp really dictates it. It's how how the fight is set up and who pulls the trigger. So who do you, what do you think would be the main, you know, game-changing trigger? So would it be the supports doing the engaging, the counter-engaging? Or do you think it'd be really much of the, the tanks at the top lane? So especially you've got a Shen and an Ulawi who's going sort of tanky and Bruiser. Um, she does produce quite a lot of damage as well, with, especially with the Black Cleaver. And, you know, like... There's so many different aspects of this game where there's people with a whole lot of damage, a whole lot of engage, or a whole lot of tankiness. So, what do you think would be the optimal, you know, the optimal position, the optimal game-changing trigger? The, ironically, it's, I think it's all going to be on Vermillion, on Vermillion's Rakan. Now, in the last fight, we saw Vermillion's Rakan get a beautiful engage, grand entrance into the quickness, and got access to the back line. I believe he had Beast Boy, Lazarus and hardwired all just you know clumped up out of the fight they became irrelevant and then his team needed to follow up they needed to kill miko's alawi and then follow on with the rest of the fight the issue is they couldn't they got burned out by miko's test of um leap of faith and they just couldn't get past him so that's i think it's definitely on vermilion win or lose because hardwired from what we've seen his target selection it's a it's difficult because he's got three people he wants to, to combo and you know comboing in ezreal is difficult Comboing FBI man is ideal, but FBI man shouldn't be that close. And Tyler is really going to be difficult to kill, especially because if, he's, if he gets hit in turtle form, he's not taking damage. So I think it's on Vermillion, win or lose. He needs to get a he needs to get an engage. He needs to get access to the backline, and either his team needs to say screw it, we're ignoring Miko's Alawi and dive in with them, or they need to kill Alawi in I think the three or four seconds that they have. So ignoring Alawi's damage is would probably cost them um, quite a lot of health especially because she does AoE damage and it's consistent and she's known to be that one champion who does the 1v5 at any almost any kind of the <laughs> any time of the game the duration and you know of course I actually quite agree with you um, it does rely on Vermilion quite a lot um, also being sort of a Rakan player as well his engages are very important and you know, picking the right person at the right time and the right position to actually do this is really important. Um, but then the only bad side to that is they do have an Alistar. So the Alistar has the capabilities to actually um, cut Rakan through his grand entrance and can cancel it, which can pretty much cost Rakan his life as well. Um, so it really depends. They can try and, you know, bait Alistar out. But if those things don't go into place properly, they actually don't have a much of a chance of winning um but also looking at the mini map right now they do have baron pinked do you think they will actually be able to get it because there's you know three seconds left on rakan 15 seconds left on um Kenan, and 19 seconds left on shen before he respawns but would this team be able to actually get this baron they should be able to, and the main reason is because they've still got the Alawi and the Alistair who are very difficult to kill, even for Baron's standard, because Baron doesn't do a ton of damage, but Baron is pretty damn tanky. So they shouldn't be able to kill the front line, and then the back line of the Graves, the Fizz, and... Apologies, not the Fizz, the Graves and the Jinx, that should be more than enough damage to kill the Baron. Now the issue of, is there going to be a contestion? Well, Udyr is alive. 
Udi has smite up and available. So there is the potential for a steal, but I really don't see a world where Greek Teller 1 gets there quick enough, is able to position himself properly, not get zoned out and or killed, and then manages to steal the Baron. So this, in theory, should be a three Baron over to the side of uh, Nazareth's Catholic College. So thinking about, you know, the current the current game where everything is at at the moment mid tower on the blue side is almost about to fall would they what would be the most optimal case for them would it be to baron and then quickly reset or baron and then straight to pushing i think i think you should be resetting if we look at the gold values jinx is sitting on you know 1500 gold alawi is sitting on a thousand gold graves is sitting on 900 gold and even alistair is sitting on 800 the only person who isn't sitting on much gold is the Fizz, who is just recalled and is sitting on just 100. So I think it would make sense. You pick up the Baron, which gives you a bit of gold, recall, you then give Fizz the blue buff, which is currently up. You give Jinx the red buff, which is currently up. You then send, I'd say realistically, you can send everyone mid, run down the middle lane, um, take out that turret. You can realistically take the second tier middle turret, and then you rotate to the bottom side of the map because that bottom wave is pushing in your favor for the side of Nazareth, and you take the bottom tier two. And at that point, I think you can back away, take the fourth dragon as it respawns, and then you can start looking at getting pick-offs and such, because that's when your Baron buff should expire, and there should be enough wave clear on the side of Glen that they won't be losing an, inhib an inhibitor unless they make a botched engage. So, so saying that you know they do get Baron, it is an it will be quite an easy Baron, especially if Udia somehow, unless he somehow does a miracle steal off this team what would be the best case scenario for the blue side in terms of they're losing their towers their minion waves are getting pushed into them um the enemy team has baron which means they also have baron minions which is which does quite a lot of damage to turrets so what would be their you know best case scenario in you know doing a counter attack to them their best case scenario is nazareth will more than likely send three or four they'll, uh, they should they'll take baron they'll recall now let's just like you said before let's assume that the uh, the udir doesn't steal baron which we're honestly not expecting they need to then hope that they send three or four members mid and take the tier one the tier one is already dead you then send three or four members to the bottom side of the map and catch whoever chooses to push that wave out more than likely it's going to be lazarus's fizz you kill the fizz you then have a one man advantage you then need to utilize that one man, one man advantage by forcing a fight on the four members of Baron. That's their best case scenario. Realistically, they still should be losing two or three turrets, but the best case scenario is they catch out the Fizz who's split pushing, and then they force an engage where FBI man gets access to the back line, destroys Beast Boy, and then the Graves and the Alawi shouldn't be able to turn the team fight around. So again, that's their best case scenario, but more than likely expecting three turrets to fall, but the inhibitors to stay alive is, I'd say the more realistic scenario we're going to see out from Glennon's International High School. So, we found out that blue team, um, uh, Rakan Vermillion has actually DC'd, disconnected, and they have until 15 minutes on the timer that we are currently looking at. Um, and if once they reach that time limit, they have to play with four people or they have to sort of you know they've got no other choice but to play or forfeit the game hopefully we do see the game continuing but you know there is nothing much we can do with australian <laughs> internet can we uh, unfortunately not not overly internet's always been a bit well if, if most people have been in oceana for a while they know exactly what the internet down here is like oh actually it looks like he's, he's reconnected with nine seconds left to go. So, Rakan is, Millions Rakan is going to be back into this. So, hopefully, hopefully, uh, no, the game will continue and we'll have a five on five. So, I'm honestly, honestly, I'm actually really looking forward to a quite a good engage by the Rakan again. Um, once he's able to land that, you know, ground entrance and everything, um, you know, Kenan jumping straight into that with maybe a Shen, um, what's the Shen called again? Oh, uh, Stan United. Stan United, right. Thank you. I have not casted in very long. Um, I'm still a very, quite a new caster, so I'm getting there. 
<laughs> yeah, they're all like there. It looks like they, uh, there's no way they don't know they're on Baron, and it looks like Udi is actually beelining for Baron is on 7k health. The Udi's gonna get there in time, but he should not be getting access in. As he's being zoned out by the Fizz, he's backed away. I think they've given yeah, they straight up given up the Baron, and I think that's honestly the best call of work. Like if the Udi jumps in and dies, that's the whole member down. So that's probably their best call. They'll recall. They'll reset their items and then they'll be able to rock back into this. So that's, as I said before during our uh, quite long break, that's what we're expecting to see now. We're going to see a reset, we're going to see a push into mid, take the tier 1, threaten the tier 2, then rotate down bot, take the tier 2 there. So right now, top lane is actually stacking quite a lot, so it will be slow pushing into the blue side. Someone definitely has to go back and actually farm that wave before it ruins the inhibitor turret. So with that, with that one person down at top lane, catching the wave there's actually four people on the map so how do we how do you think they're going to distribute that do you think red team is actually just going to put all their forces into mid lane or they're going to get someone to split push bot and maybe one more t person top splitting the well, blue side around it looks like Lenin's already done the splitting themselves they've got Ezreal down on the bottom side as well as the shen who's just not really able to do much so it's the five versus one they finally realize they need zero so that's the tier one turret falling as honestly we expected because it was always going to be low but here is where things get interesting. There's the potential for the dive. It's a five versus five, and with the sub and the side lanes pushing in, Nazareth don't need to do anything. They can let the minions do this for them. And simply, top lane is pushing in their favor. Bottom lane, I don't believe is at no. I don't believe is pushing in their favor anymore. But Fizz looks like he's setting up for a backline access flank, and if he's able to do it, it's going to be disastrous for them. They cannot have their battle lines battle lines disrupted, especially with a Fizz. Oh my lord, they're trying to force the FBI going in, but he gets knocked away. Beast Boy is still alive. He finally gets the reset and is now diving into the back lane. It looks like they are unable to million try his damage, but it's just not going to be enough. A do or die fight, and unfortunately for the side of Glennon, that was definitely a die fight. So once again, they did try to, they forced it way too much. The cannon going in with the ult, and especially flashing onto them. Ooh, Lazarus forcing is a little bit forced to use that hourglass as well, but. They're forced all the, way, all the way out of there, and this is disastrous. This is going to be the end. This is not what. This is nothing like what we said was the best case scenario for the blue team. Unfortunately, this is this is definitely worst case scenario as the inhibitor drops at 22 minutes. So I think that was a um, very big problem for the um, for the cannon doing that. I don't think they wanted to do that, but they saw. I think he felt the need to actually try and do something to get a kill, but. Like again, Jix almost died, but she actually survived that fight. And, you know, I think that was a big problem in, you know, Kennen's thought process because if you can't kill the Jinx, you're gonna lose the game. Especially when you're forcing so hard this late into the game against the fed Jinx. What can you really do? Especially getting kicked, um, headbutted away by the Alistair as well. So, what? The headbutt is what like, saved the Jinx there. The Jinx, the Jinx should have died in that engage. I do agree with you, FBI forced it a little bit. Partly I feel it's a, maybe a bit of miscommunication, because we saw the cannon flash in, and then there was no follow-up. Like, there was flashes on two other members of the side of Glennon, and it, no one decided to follow up the engage. So maybe it's a thing of, he thought he saw an opening and went in with no... that didn't tell anyone, is going to be my best assumption of what happened there, but... Either way, they have lost their inhibitor now, and now it looks like a stack on the bottom lane, they're gonna stack in the mid, and this is a serious issue because you've already proven you can't win team fights. Like, they're really gonna struggle even just clearing the waves at this point. I think it'd be very optimal for um, for the red side if Ilawi wasn't actually there in the team fights. So bringing someone up to her to 1v1 her because she won't lose in that kind of team fight. Ooh, Jamillion gets hit by Chum the Waters and oh, that was a beautiful rocket. If you look at the minimap, they are so spread out right now. And in fact, Jamillion sort of got left to dry, left out to dry there. So we're in a 4v5 situation, especially with the jungler and the tank in mid lane. Not doing much damage. He is able to force him back. But what do you think is going to happen? They are sort of um, doing a seesaw kind of, you know, rotation. So yeah, they're doing it's it's a seesaw it's a seesaw split. Someone has to deal with the top lane push as we see Udi moving to there now. They can't actually stop the siege on the bottom and the middle lane. Actually, they might be able to survive now because Baron is down, but they simply can't win the fights. They need all five members to win the fights. And with Shen now hanging out trying to protect the inhibitor turret, the Nexus turret. Apologies. 
They can't do anything. They're forced to back away. They're forced to continually give up ground. Graves should be taking out the middle inhibitor turret now. And with that falling as well, the chances of Glenn coming back into this is just really not looking pretty. With Jinx nearly hitting that three item spike. She is eight and one, as you see. Down the water is uh, a little bit, a little bit of miss. They seem to be actually trying to, you know, that they, they, they are desperately trying to protect their base. But they are constantly getting bombarded by minions, especially in the top wave by the super minions that are spawning. And Udi are being forced to stay in base. They are, they're going to easily get the dragon, which is another ocean dragon, I'm pretty sure. So, two ocean dragons. The, the amount of region they have, the amount of sustain they have, is insane compared to the poor blue side who's got no dragons and no, no dragons no nothing really coming out of their side and is if you look down the items the items can sort of tell the story of this game 10k gold in the lead for the size of nazareth and everyone on the side of, of lennon outside of zero is just really struggling to put together their second you know core item while if you look on the side of nazareth everyone has at least two items jinx is sitting at three which is expected of an 8 and 1 hyper carry. So it's really not looking good that even if they get a really good engage, like we saw earlier with FBI Man, I don't think they're actually going to be able to win a straight up 5v5 anymore. I think I quite agree as well. So, you know, being the losing team, what is the most important thing that they should do right now? Is it Should it be, you know, getting some wards out into their jungle? Is it, you know, maybe change something up? Bring, bring people to different places of the map. What what do you think they have? What is their only hope? The issue with their only hope is the fact that they are just so far behind. 10k gold in a 5v5 team fight is straight up impossible to win, I believe. There's very few scenarios, even if you're the ones where you are dictating the engage, where you can win this. And with Baron going to fall uh, for Nazareth a second time, I think this is the nail in the coffin for them. They can't run up and face check. If we look at the wards, there are wards everywhere, and one person gets caught out, that is a free Baron. He, like, it doesn't matter who it is. Once that happens, Baron, you run it through, you run through the enemy base, and it's just straight up over. And, uh, unfortunately, the Udia was the one that went to face check. Stan United is not going to save him. Chum the waters lands on the FBI man. It looks like this is. Oh, actually, they're trying to turn this around, but Jinx is untouched, and the backline Spirit's Refuge is not going to buy enough time. It's it looks like Nether are just going to slaughter the rest of them. But that's another one. Jinx finally getting the reset. And they just simply said, Chen, you're not worth the time to kill. Vermillion is now trying to run into the remnants of his base. But unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be enough. And with all those members falling, this is surely going to be game. Yes. Especially with the Udia dying. They really don't need to care about anything anymore. Exactly. They're trying to hold the line. But unfortunately, Shen is... Uh, he's. He's not standing united with anyone and he dies alone as that is Nazareth Catholic College taking the game over Glennon International High School. And that will be the end of this game Eventually. for week 8 in the Victorian Games for GG. <laughs> it was quite it's a one-sided game, wasn't it? From what we were able to see, we weren't there for the early stages of the game, so we don't know exactly how Jinx got to being 5-0 and zero, uh, that early on into the series, but once that happened, they played around it really well. Glennon didn't go down without a fight, though. Their team fight where Nazareth burned all their crowd control early, was in horrible battle positions, and then Glennon was able to take advantage with a beautiful flash maelstrom coming out of FBI was... That was their chance to get back in it, but unfortunately then they forced one or two fights that just didn't need to be forced, and it just sort of snowballed out of control from there, unfortunately, for them. Yeah, that was really unfortunate, especially, you know, when they're so desperate for a kill, forcing it sometimes isn't the right answer. Especially, you know, Rakan and the Kenneth, the small mistakes make a big impact on the game. If you die and you're a carry, or if you're an engager, and you don't actually, you know, end up getting what you want, what you need, you need that jinx to be dead. It just, it just won't work out. It's, it's pretty hard to win a game where you're 10,000 gold behind. But they did do their best. And this is just how it is now.
Indeed, they tried their best, but unfortunately, uh, they could only get so far before they were taken out. But that is going to be it for this first round of tonight. Now, remember, there is a second round of events in half an hour. So at 7 o'clock, we go live. So hopefully, uh, you all will join us for the second round of the High School Esports League. Yep, and you guys will be cast. Um, the cast's next game would be Jackson Prote Williams and Ewan Iatos. Raid, mm -hmm. if I got yeah, that right, yeah. yep, and yeah, it was enough. he'll be back, <laughs> and you guys just um, stay, stick around, um, we are going to close the stream and then reopen it in about 20 minutes, um, just so that we can get re things restarted and, you know, everything reset up again, because there were quite a few technical issues, but, um, you know, I just want to say thank you guys all for sticking around, um, the stream and supporting you know all the players and especially to the to those who you know let this happen thank you guys